All right, Electric Moto Vlog is back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about battery pack balancing. So, uh, yeah, it's showtime. Let's go. All right, so here we have a three cell battery pack uh, and each one has its own capacity in amp hours and its own internal resistance in ohms. As you can see, they're uh, quite low. Um, and I'll show you where the, I got those numbers in a second here. And below here, we have a status of charge graph versus uh, cell number. So yeah, as you can expect, this is cell one, two, and three. So here's where I got those numbers from. This is actually the spec sheet Cal Battery provided me when I ordered my batteries. So uh, I actually just took the first three cells off this list. Uh, but let's go into this for a sec here because this is pretty interesting. So they provide you this spec sheet uh, of the serial numbers of all the batteries, their tested internal resistance, open circuit voltage, and capacity in amperes. And this is uh, quite handy and quite interesting just looking at it. Uh, basically right out the get-go what the manufacturer is saying, uh, what they're telling you is that every single cell they manufacture is different. And I mean that's just the nature of the beast. Every single cell is going to be different. And just looking at the two first cells on the list here, uh, you can see how apparent that is. Um, this one here, the first one, has an internal resistance of 0 0.4 milliohms, whereas the next one below it has an internal resistance of 0 0.32 milliohms. Now that might seem like nothing, but if you actually go and punch that in your calculator, you'll find that that's actually a 25% difference. So they're basically saying that the difference in internal resistance between these two batteries, the first two on the list here, is about 25%, which is uh, pretty mind-blowing. That's uh, pretty huge. And of course, if you go to the next columns over, you'll find that uh, uh, in terms of the precision this chart goes to, um, the two cells in the, in the first two rows here are, are identical in terms of open cir circuit voltage and capacity. So that uh, internal re resistance figure there is uh, just the main thing that's different. So yeah, this is the spec sheet uh, I got, and it's really quite nice that they provide this. And it even has a stamp here of uh, who tested the batteries and uh, another signature or stamp here of uh, who packed them up. So, like, uh, yeah, it's really good of these guys to do this. And uh, it, uh, if you uh, go ordering a set of batteries from, this guys, from these guys, uh, you'll get one of these things. So continuing on with this example, um, as you can see, we have three cells. Uh, they're all fully charged. They're at 100% status of charge. That's what uh, these three bars mean here. So now let's discharge the pack. So what happens as we discharge the pack? We put a load on it. We put a resistor on it. Uh, this is the direction of current flow. And as we discharge our pack, um, the cell's uh, status of charge goes down. And since the cell number three there, the cell on the end, since it has lower capacity, it has 76 amp hours instead of 77 amp hours, and the same current is flowing through all three batteries, uh, you can figure out pretty quick that cell three is going to be the first one that's going to go dead. So as you can see here, as we discharge and discharge, cell three goes dead. So what do we have to do now? Well, we have to charge them back up. So we put a power supply in there, and now current is flowing in this direction. So once again, the same current is flowing through all three batteries, and we're charging them up. And once again, cell three there has the lowest capacity, so you'd expect it to charge up quicker than the other two. And as a result, um, after a charge, we end up back where we started from. Voila, no problems, right? wrong. So the example I just showed you, why won't that actually happen in real life? Well, we made a really big assumption during that last example, 
And the assumption was that the coulombometric efficiency of each of these cells was equal to 1. Whereas in real life, it's never going to be equal to 1. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, coulombometric efficiency is equivalent to charge out over charge in. So let's say you discharge a battery and you charge it back up. Well, if, if the, you put in the same amount of charge that you took out, then you'd think that the battery would end up at the same status of charge. Uh, but this isn't the case, because what happens all the time when you're operating a battery is parasitic side reactions are happening. And these parasitic side reactions consume charge. So our ideal battery in the last example had a coulombometric efficiency of 1. But we all know that's not possible in real life. There is no such thing as a perfect battery. And one big thing I want to point out is that coulombometric efficiency changes with temperature. So not only do the batteries not start out having a coulombometric efficiency of 1, uh, the coulombometric efficiency of the battery will also change as it ages and as it operates. So for example, in the last example I showed that uh, this battery here had the lowest capacity and therefore it was the first to discharge and the first to charge back up. But this battery over here, as you can see, it has the highest internal resistance. So as this string of cells is operating, this cell over here will incur the most amount of cell self-heating. And that cell self-heating will affect the coulombometric efficiency. In fact, the, the warmer or the higher temperature a cell is run at, uh, the lower the coulombometric efficiency. And, as you can expect, as every single cell is unique in a battery pack, every single cell is going to have a different coulombometric efficiency. And, as you can expect from that, this will lead to pack imbalance. So, one thing's for certain, we will need to balance. And not only will we need to balance once, we will need to balance continually as the pack is operating, all the time. So let's go through that example again here, but this time cell 3 has a low coulombometric efficiency. So our pack is fully charged, we're at 100% status of charge, and we have our three cells and we're discharging them again. So as our pack discharges, uh, our cell 3 is, uh, once again, it's lower capacity than the other two, and as well it has a low coulombometric efficiency as well. So it's going to have more parasitic side reactions going on than the other two cells. So once again, it's going to lose charge as you use it. So there we go. So our battery pack is essentially dead again. So now it's time to charge the pack back up. So we put a power supply on there and we charge it back up. And as we charge it back up, we find that, oh no, our first two cells have hit 100% status of charge. But our cell 3 there, because it has the low coulombometric efficiency, uh, it's not at 100% status of charge, so it has some catching up to do. So if we want to be able to utilize this battery pack fully, we need to bring that cell 3 up to 100% status of charge. That's what balancing is all about. Or, alternatively, we could bring cell 1 and 2 down to 78% status of charge, but clearly that would be more work, so you might as well just bring cell 3 up to 100% status of charge. So up until this point I've been talking about battery status of charge. Well the problem with battery status of charge is that it's not something that can be measured. Uh, it has to be inferred from something else, something you can measure. And while something you can measure is terminal voltage of the battery or cell that you're interested in. And as it turns out, uh, it depends on a lot on the chemistry uh, of the cell that you're you're looking into. So, for example, with this lithium iron phosphate cell from Calb here on the left, 
Uh, you can see that the discharge curve here is very flat uh, for most of the discharge of the battery. So as the cell discharges, that voltage doesn't change much. It's uh, pretty difficult to measure that small change and infer a good, uh, you know, um, a good uh, estimate of the status of charge of the battery from that. Whereas this cell on the right here, this NCR18650 made by Panasonic, uh, this is a very common cell they use in a lot of laptops. Uh, and as you can see here, its discharge curve is actually very linear. And the voltage de decreases in a very linear fashion as the, as the cell discharges. And that makes it very easy for uh, electronics or a meter or something to measure that voltage and then from that you can determine roughly what status of charge uh, the cell is at. And so that's the challenge with these lithium iron phosphate cells is that since this curve is so flat it's difficult to measure that voltage change. On the other hand it's, it's really nice for electric vehicles because then as you discharge the cell uh, the performance of the vehicle won't change much as uh, the cell even approaches uh, close to dead. So, when you're trying to balance a lithium iron phosphate battery pack, uh, because this voltage curve is so flat, uh, you, really have, you really have to do the balancing in two of one, of one of the steeper regions. So you have this steeper region at the top here, and you have the steeper region at the bottom here. So your, your electronics you have on there will be able to, to detect that voltage change much easier and it'll be able to figure out uh, what states of charge it's at much easier and more accurately. So this is where you're going to do your balancing. Now there's two commonly accepted techniques by hobbyists. There's top balance where you balance your battery pack at the top end here where the cell is nearly fully charged and there's also bottom balance where you balance your battery pack at uh, the bottom end here where your pack is uh, or your cells are nearly dead. In terms of uh, practical application of uh, both the bottom balancing and top balancing techniques, uh, the top balancing technique is definitely the more practical of the two um, because as you can imagine uh, every day when you come home the first thing you do is you plug in your electric vehicle and that will start to uh, charge the pack up at which point it can be balanced whereas uh, if, if you employ the bottom balancing technique uh, you'd have to somehow discharge the battery pack down there uh, to that, uh, that that bottom area there for balancing and uh, it's really counterintuitive because typically uh, when you come home and plug your vehicle in you expect it to charge up not to discharge so <laughs> I imagine if they if they did the bottom balancing technique in a in a commercial situation with a, a mass-produced electric vehicle, it'd catch a lot of people off guard and and really make a lot of people mad. <laughs> so, uh, really, the more practical of the two on a daily basis is definitely the uh, uh, top balancing technique. So, I think that's all I have for you for this uh, battery pack balancing video. I hope you learned something. I know I definitely did making this video. Um, I just want to point out, uh, tack a little note on this video, that when I was doing that kilometric efficiency part of the video, uh, that was just one possible source of uh, battery pack imbalance. Uh, there's quite a few different uh, different sources of pack imbalance, and uh, it's, there's just way too many to go through uh, without making my brain turn to mush. <laughs> so I just wanna, wanted to point out that uh, regardless of, of what your application is uh, and what you're doing, if you have a bunch of these uh, cells connected in series like this, um, you're going to have to expect pack imbalance because the real takeaway from this is that every single cell in your battery pack is unique and regardless of how hard you try, it's going to be operating under unique conditions and that's going to uh, cause pack imbalance. So you're going to need some method in place uh, to correct that imbalance and to keep your battery pack operating um, 
as well as it can. And you know, it's, it really pays off to get educated about these things because, uh, of course, batteries are are not cheap, and and when a uh, a battery pack is imbalanced and and causing issues, then uh, you know it just just ruins your day. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's all I have for you today. Uh, until next time, I'll see ya.